tend to make these journeys around a specific event. A few years ago I did a series of work that focused on the locations of the Jack the Ripper murders in Whitechapel in London. This journey is very much more personal. It doesn't have the same kind of cultural currency that uh, my, my other work does in terms of location. I make paintings from photographs and it's key that I make a journey to these locations. Um, I make a photograph, um, there are very formal concerns with the photograph. I'd be looking at making quite an awkward composition. I'd probably be looking at lining things up very much towards the centre of a composition um, and making uh, a kind of claustrophobic um, shallow depth of space um, with the composition and referencing the edge of the, the rectangle all of the time. This series of work is going to be two, maybe three paintings um, and it follows a journey that starts here and goes down that road. A Volvo estate car um, full, of, full of lads came and passed me and my two friends, went around that roundabout and then followed us up this road. It was that, kind of at this point that we realised that there was something going to happen. Um, we didn't realise what, um, and we were quite confident that we could talk our way out of it. Um, so we started walking a little bit quicker, um, but we were still relatively confident that it would be fine. Um, as we continued further down this street, it became quickly apparent that it wasn't going to be fine after all. We walked a lot quicker, ended up running, and we got hit in the back with bottles. Um, we started running and my two friends got away at that point and all five of them came back um, and got me. Uh, the first thing I really knew was a kick in the back of my head that uh, knocked me down, knocked me out and then these guys took penalty kicks at my head for about 10 minutes. With the nature of, um, of where I am um, and the, the type of shot it is, there are any number of ways that I could choose to to fill the rectangle and now painterly decisions come in. Um, so I'm recording the side but I'm also trying to fill the frame as, in as interesting a way as possible that still references um, the event and exactly where it happened. Um, on a lot of levels the most true thing I could do would be to point the camera to the floor but that wouldn't necessarily make, make for the most interesting painting. So when I came to I was about here um, I don't know how long I'd been unconscious, but I, I didn't have my glasses, I didn't have my wallet. Um, and I looked around, walked back maybe 20 feet up in that direction, and I found, found my glasses without a scratch on them, which was kind of remarkable. Um, and I, I kind of cleared my head and I walked off in that direction. I remember this quite differently. Um, I'd just come from where we were over the road um, and I'd headed off in that direction towards, um, what, where, towards my mother's house. Um, two of them came back and I, I ran um, over in this direction. I remember it as if it was on that side of the road, but looking at the site logically, it can't have been uh, for a very particular reason. Um, they got me again um, and as I came to, I, uh, I have a very vivid memory of blood flowing away from my face down a grate. There isn't a grate over there, so it must have been here. Uh, and there was a reflection of that lamppost in the blood. There's very little direct mixing and there's a, a real element of chance in what happens. I kind of enjoy the, the contradiction of making something that looks ostensibly or from a distance quite photographic but having it in a quite a uncontrolled or loose way. I, like, I enjoy how testing how far I can push the, the looseness of them and still have a, an image hold together as being photographically derived, if not kind of photoreal. Absolutely no finesse to this stage at all. It's getting coloured out.
and a colour that doesn't belong to the image as such, but when the multiplicities of other layers of colour happen on top of this, it will kind of settle in. And the underlying colour on this one is pinkish. So I'm going to start it with alizarin crimson. So a very bright purplish crimson. And again, this goes on in a pretty haphazard way, kind of engineering the these little kind of accidents, little bits of flotsam and jetsam that are happening, thinking about what I'm actually trying to describe, um, which is muck and mud. I'm going to turn the painting upside down, see if there's any drips. They go in the right direction, they don't go down onto the path area. So that shape comes down something like that, goes directly across. There's probably something like 20 layers of paint on there at the moment. But I pay quite a lot of attention to, at this stage, um, to the colours that I'm mixing. So I, I suppose in a quite a similar way to how a, an abstract painter would have a, um, a consideration to colour relationships and uh, composition of colours. So I'm painting very kind of um, basic attention, I suppose, to where the groupings of the individual blades of grass are, but I'm by no means getting slavish about putting them in exactly those places. Some bits as well, at least slightly lighter colours. So some of this will potentially get covered over, but a lot of it will stay. What I quite like about making work in series um, and working on them at the same time, literally using the same paint and the same mixes, um, across different paintings it just helps helps them to kind of belong to each other so in theory it's these little specks and spatters that knit together from a distance to ape, ape something representational and believable I suppose believable is the more uh, important word there rather than representational I mean, it's a little bit of a departure in terms of it having autobiographical content. Um, and it was a bit different. I had a film crew going with me and I took the photograph. Um, but uh, as soon as it gets to the, the painting stage, it's, it's just a series of problems um, to be solved. So yeah, when I was taking this, this photograph for this, I knew that um, that big kind of uh, rhomboid shape was going to be with transparent paint with many glazes. I'd made that plan. Um, but that was, to an extent, all I knew. And it wasn't until kind of sitting down and drawing the thing and, and looking at it on the computer, like I say, that I realised that, oh, hell, how am I going to paint that? <laughs> and then these kind of things reveal themselves, these little kind of problems to be solved. I share, a, I share quite a lot of an ethos with, with abstract painting. I, I want to make the paint do a lot of work, um, not just the image. I don't want the the viewing of the painting to to finish as soon as we the, the viewers recognise that it's a painting of this or a painting of that. There needs to be more to to go on than than it being that reductive.